the summer of 2018, 16-year-old Rochland Kate Mance was diagnosed with two rare blood diseases. I had my bone marrow biopsy done and I was diagnosed with aplastic anemia and PNH, which stands for paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. The only cure for the life-threatening disorders was a stem cell transplant, but none of her family were a match. I was completely heartbroken when I found out that I wasn't a match for my sister Rochland. Um, it, it just was devastating that I couldn't help her in that way, being her oldest sister. When somebody needs a stem cell transplant, the first place they look is within somebody's own family. And 25% of patients are fortunate enough to find a match within their own family. However, for those other 75% of patients who don't have a match within their family, they're reliant on an unrelated stem cell donor. As a young Filipino woman, Rochland faced a greater challenge than most. She needed a 10 out of 10 stem cell match, which essentially meant her donor would most likely need to come from the same ethnic community. At the time, in Canada, only 1% of registered stem cell donors were of Filipino descent. When it comes to stem cell transplantation, you're much more likely to find a match within somebody of the same ethnic background as you. And this is why it's really important to build a stem cell registry or a cord blood bank that's reflective of the unique ethnic diversity that we have here in Canada. Despite the challenges, Canadian Blood Services, a national not-for-profit organization, found a match for Rochland through its stem cell registry and Rochland received her transplant in February 2019. Stem cells do save lives. I'm living proof of it. Hopefully, whenever the time is right and I get to meet my donor, I'd like to thank them personally. Meeting them would be an honor. Canadian Blood Services continues to strive to build the ethnic diversity of its stem cell registry. We actually oversee Canada's blood system in all of the provinces and territories outside of Quebec. So we collect red cells, plasma, platelets. We're involved in intraprovincial organ sharing. And we also run Canadian Blood Services Stem Cell Program, a program that offers stem cell products to Canadian patients in need of a stem cell transplant. The program consists of an adult stem cell donor registry where volunteer donors can join the stem cell registry. We also oversee Canadian Blood Services National Public Cord Blood Bank, where we collect cord blood units from moms delivering at designated collection hospitals across Canada. We also run a cord blood for research program where we provide non-qualifying units for research studies at Canadian Blood Services and to scientists across Canada. And we also oversee two autologous stem cell manufacturing programs. Working with community groups, Canadian Blood Services wants to encourage individuals from the Indigenous community to join the registry. At this time, uh, less than 1% of Indigenous people make up uh, people who are on the registry. Indigenous people have had historical and contemporary experiences with the healthcare system being marginalized or excluded from them. So this will require Canadian Blood Services and also like the, the greater health system to form better relationships to see Indigenous people as self-determining nations and partners in the process. The process for me to donate bone marrow to Canadian Blood Services was a really positive experience. I felt very lucky to, to, be, um, to be part of that and to, to help somebody else. Canadian Blood Services also recruits volunteer mothers to donate cord blood from the donor's umbilical cord and placenta just after birth. I decided to donate my baby's cord blood to the uh, cord blood bank because I wanted to help enrich the diversity of the cord blood bank itself. My background is quite diverse, so I felt I could help and, and contribute in that way. The donation process was both easy and non-invasive for both me and my child, and it was easy to submit online. It was immediate and it was, it was fast. The recruitment of registrants who have broad ethnic diversity and also banking cord blood units from a broad range of ethnic backgrounds is ensuring that we have those HLA haplotypes, those HLA matching opportunities for more patients. We've had a big focus on recruiting young donors in recent years. This is something that transplant centers want for their patients. Aged 18, Timothy White was matched with his stem cell recipient, Colleen Lecours, after registering at a Comic-Con event. A bit later they called me and said, you want to do some testing? We did some testing, some more testing, some more testing. And eventually they said, do you want to save a life? And absolutely, it was a perfect opportunity to help somebody in a way that not very many other people can. I actually got all his contact right prior to Thanksgiving. And I thought, what better way to, than to reach out to Timothy and say, hi, you saved my life. He met my whole family and uh, they couldn't be any more grateful. 
When I first started at Canadian Blood Services, we used to say that cord blood and stem cells could be used to treat over 50 diseases and disorders. Since that time, that list has grown to over 80 diseases and disorders. The whole field of cellular therapy and regenerative medicine continues to grow and expand, so I anticipate that we'll continue to see more uses of stem cell products.